Let's get started with the content of Junkie XL Brass. The horns are often the heroes of modern film scoring. They can not only carry the big epic melodies and fill the orchestral textures with beautiful big harmonies, but also have a dark and menacing low-end range to their expressive possibilities. This collection covers all those domains. Junkie XL Brass provides a solo horn in three different section sizes. The articulations, dynamics, and tonal ranges are consistent among them. Let's start exploring them. from the softest lyrical gestures to the boldest heroic lines. This is possible due to the insane amount of material recorded here. First, there are the sustained notes recorded over the full range and in all dynamic layers. But of course, the sustains alone are not enough to present a melodic line. We need the little transitional sounds the players and instruments produce when they play seamlessly from one note to another. This is called legato. Orchestral tools recorded those transitions on all note intervals, starting at the repetition of the same note up to a whole octave, and also at all dynamic layers. Depending on the speed of the particular line, the impression of those transitions can change drastically. To ensure that Junkie XL Brass is playable in all speeds, two different speeds of transitions were recorded, and an adaptive legato engine is constantly morphing and adjusting them in the background, so that you can just focus on playing or programming your line. Orchestral Tools introduced the adaptive legato technology with Berlin Strings back in 2013, and has refined it since then. It's designed to do all the hard work to make sure your melodic lines sound as good and realistic as possible.
For a different attack to the notes, we also recorded soft sustain articulations for all of the instruments. This is especially useful for warm and lush chord passages, but they also cover the whole dynamic range. Of course, you can also activate legato for all those soft sustains. They'll most certainly work great on more lyrical melodies and give you an alternative to the standard attack sustains. For idiomatic orchestral brass programming, short articulations are essential. Junky XL Brass provides the ones needed for modern cinematic writing. We have a standard and a very short staccato. The former is good for accents or slower playing, while the latter allows not only very tight notes, but fast repetitions and fanfare-like phrases. For the longer short notes, we have the marcato short and marcato long articulations. Those are excellent for accents or more aggressive and punchy melodic lines. All those shorts are recorded and designed to work together seamlessly for you to build all kinds of brass phrasings. Another very typical brass articulation is the accented sustain note. Depending on style on dynamics, this is also referred to as esforzato or fortepiano. Junky XL Brass has those as well and in multiple dynamic layers. <laughs> For some extra flavor, we also have some upward rips at our disposal. Those are great for stabs and effects, and again, work wonderfully when combined with the other articulations. Let's move on to the next instrument group, the tenor trombones. Junky XL Brass has four different setups here as well, a solo instrument and sections of three, six, and even 12 players. Historically, the appearance of trombones in music was often linked to supernatural or religious occurrences. 
that mighty and powerful depiction of those instruments carried on to the cinematic music world as well. Trombones can play beautiful, warm, and lush choral parts, but they are especially appreciated for their bright and strong brassy qualities in the middle and low registers. Legato on the trombone is played a bit differently than on the other brass instruments. The players usually don't slur between notes because, depending on the particular interval, a more or less big move of the slide has to be made that won't allow the player to produce a smooth, slurred transition. Trombonists instead put a close re-tongue attack between the two notes and moving the slide as fast as possible to make the transition appear as seamless as possible. Junkie XL Brass recorded those transitions for all its trombones. The different section sizes of Junkie XL Brass are not only good for scaling your brass sections, they're also useful for splitting a larger section. For example, you got a phrase for your 12 bones battery, but then later you want to split it into two voices. For that, you can switch to the six player ensemble. If you want to split into four voices, the section of three players comes in handy. <laughs> Regarding articulations, you got exactly the same ones as with the horns. Let's listen to shorts, each on their own and also combined into phrases. You can also combine those with the S for Zando sustains and the rips to enhance your trombone parts even further. The lower extension to the tenor trombone is the bass trombone. It's actually tuned the same as the tenor, so it has the same tube length, but it has a bigger bell and a bigger bore and is equipped with additional tubing to allow all chromatic notes down to the lowest register. For Junkie XL Brass, we have a section of three players available for the bass trombones.
they have the same articulations as the tenors and will work wonderfully as a bass voice together with them. The real heroes of the brass section, however, are the trumpets. While the low brass instruments require a lot of air from the player, especially in that forceful kind of playing, which is often asked for in modern cinematic music, the trumpets are the physically most demanding instruments. The higher and longer the notes, the more difficult they are to perform. Recording trumpet samples is not for the faint of heart, and none more so than recording the required samples for the Junkie XL brass collection. We have, as with the other instruments, five dynamic layers from the most quiet to the loudest possible sound. In the highest register, it is impossible to play really quiet on the trumpet, but orchestral tools made sure that the five dynamic layers still have their space up there. By the way, for some applications, you might not need that very high dynamic range. The solo trumpet here plays all the way up to the loudest physically possible volume. This can easily be too much for some music styles. On every acoustic instrument, there is a point where volume exceeds beauty of tone. To manage that, you could simply avoid moving your mod wheel up there, but the sign player also allows you to deactivate certain dynamic layers. You can, for example, turn off the loudest or the two loudest dynamic layers but keep the full range of your dynamic controller and get a very nice sounding warm lyrical trumpet. Switch to the vibrato sustains, and you get this. Besides the solo trumpet, we have sections of three and six players. Trumpets are so loud and forceful that six players can easily cope with 12 horns or 12 trombones. Phrases for the trumpets can get quite virtuosic and fast, so as with the horns. Orchestral tools made sure to capture the right legato transitions to allow melodic playing at any speed.
At the same time, the short articulations are crucial to depict the rhythmic and fanfare-like idioms of the trumpet. We have the same selection here as with the horns and trombones. And also with the trumpets, the real magic happens if you start to combine all those articulations to make colorful and expressive phrases. The tuba is the fundamental voice of the orchestra brass section. In modern cinematic music, it's often not really that audible, but you would instantly miss it if it wasn't there. It often plays together with the trombones and acts as a bass voice within their harmonic structure or supports a strong unison sound with its weight one octave below them. So usually it doesn't appear as bright and cutting through the mix as the trombones. But for Junkie XL Brass, the tuba was performed and recorded in a way that allows it to shine through on its own as well as together with the trombones. Those very low notes are very hard to perform at that massive force and volume. The player has to pump so much air through the instrument that a note can only be held for a couple of seconds. During the recording sessions, we also had to make sure to include a lot more rests to allow the player's circulatory system to recover. The lowest octave of the tuba can sound very loud and fat, but if you want that almost superhuman powerful sound, take a look at its second octave. Here, the instrument can really cut through even in dense mixes. For such a big instrument, one might not expect that it can also be played very virtuosic and snappy. Orchestral Tools recorded the fast runs transitions for the tuba exactly for that, besides the standard slurred transitions, obviously. Together with the shorts, we can get some surprisingly nimble results. <laughs> Add the trombones to it, and you got your low brass ready for action. At first sight, a cymbasso might appear as a strange morph between a tuba and a trombone, both sound-wise and from the looks of it. And it's not wrong to look at it in that way. It's basically a kind of valve contrabass trombone performed usually by tuba players. It acts in the same tonal range as the tuba, 
but has a more focused and bright sound due to its different bore and bell size. But it's darker and warmer sounding than a standard bass or contrabass trombone. With those qualities, it's very popular in the low brass section of modern cinematic settings. In Junkie XL Brass, we get a section of three cymbassi. Just for reference, that same phrase played first by the bass trombones and then by the tuba. As you can easily hear, the cymbassi truly shine in their low register. The instruments are as demanding as the tuba when it comes to the amount of air that's needed to produce those sounds, so use them wisely. We also have the same articulations as with the other sections. If you want to make your cymbassi line warmer and fatter, you can simply invite the tuba to join. Add the tenor and bass trombones, and you get the most forceful low brass imaginable. This is Junkie XL Brass by Tom Holkenborg, recorded at the Teldex scoring stage, mixed by Alan Meyerson, and produced by Orchestral Tools to bring a next-gen sampled brass collection to composers all around the world.